Hello Newcastle fans TV and we are on location here. I'm in writing at the nice posh end of Gateshead and we're here to give you some awards. Now some of you have been asking for this. So this is awards that I'm going to be bringing up with with one of my uh, family members, Dale. And he's going to run you through the awards and I'm going to be the opposite. I'm going to be the mean guy and go, go through the disharmony in the club. Bemba, since he's come into Newcastle, he's been strong with all the centre backs with Colaccini. Right, so I'm doing the opposite. Who's been the worst young player? I think I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to say Rolanda Ahrens. It's just because of the simple fact he hasn't been around all season. He's missing big, massive chunks of the season. This, I thought this season was going to break through and start become a regular, but it's again, he's still at square one. So Rolanda Ahrens for me. My best player of the season is going to be Andres Townsend. Since we've bought him, he's been fantastic for the club, scoring goals, and we've been on a match unbeaten run with him. This is going to be a controversial one again. Worst player of the season. You could name loads, I want your comments down there below, but I'm going to go for Sim De Jong for worst player of the season. Ahead of Stephen Taylor, and I'll tell you why. Stephen Taylor only played a handful of games, under 10 games. Sim De Jong played 22 and didn't score any goals at all during the season. So for me, De Jong gets player, worst player of the year. My breakthrough player of the season is going to be Lascelles. Since Benitez came in, he brought him in, he's played fantastically well, and look at the results. And for the opposite answer, no one. Let me know if you think you disagree in the comments. My best individual performance of the year, it's going to go to Renandro when he scored four against Norwich. It was brilliantly goals. Also, I want to include Rob Elliott's performance against Bournemouth when we won 1-0. And of course, I'm going to say the opposite. So for me, you've got two options. For me, you've got Mitrovic's red card against Arsenal because he cost us the point. And you've also got Stephen, Stephen Taylor's shocking display against Southampton when we went down 3-1 and he subbed off at half-time. Stephen Taylor gets it for me, absolute bollocks. Best team performance of the season was the last game of the season when we won Spurs 5-1. The reason was, although we went down, the fans were terrific, they were singing for Rafa and the team gave a solid performance. And again, you lovely people, I'm going to be negative again. So I'm going to go for, there's a couple of options that spring to mind straight away. You could say the Derby defeat, but that was a referee decision. You could say the 6-1 against Man City, but I'm going to go for the 5-1 away defeat to Selhurst Park against Crystal Palace. The team's performance was fucking dog's bollocks. What, even, what made it even worse is Steve McLaren left Mitrovic on the bench and chucked on Johan Gufran for centre midfield. Go and get a fucking hair transplant. This tactical decision of the season is giving Sissoko the captain's armband. And the reasons are, since he's been captain, his performances shot well up and the performances have been brilliant. And look at the run we went on to the end of the season. Six games unbeaten. And of course, I'm back again with the evil stuff. So the worst tactical decision for me was McLaren playing the 4-2-3-1 formation for a period of about three months. It got the results, no results to be fair. We had a run where we bottomed the league. Everybody was saying, stop playing the one up front. When he brought Perez into the side, it totally changed the way we play. So for me, 4-2-3-1 formation under McLaren is a fucking joke. Signing of the season is Andres Townsend without no matter what. Because he wasn't getting games for Spurs, and who would have thought a London out would come all the way to the North East to play football? And since he's been there, look at the runs he's been on, and he should have got called up to the Euros. So the worst signing of the season, I've got a few to name here. You could go with Talvin, you could go with Dumbia, and you could go with Savier. They're the main three. For me, I'm going to go with Dumbia. Not, not because of the player himself, it's the board decision. I felt it was a rush decision on deadline day to go and sign a striker because we didn't have one in, and the lad got literally under 90 minutes football in four months. It's an absolute piss take by the board to green car signing. Fuck off out of our club. Decision of the season by Newcastle United is sacking Steve McLaren. He was a fucking pile of shit. He was. But then positive is we brought in Rafa Benitez. He changed the club. He changed the player's spirits. And look what we could have done if he got appointed sooner. And he's just said it for us. He's stolen your limelight. So the worst decision at the club was not sacking Steve McLaren earlier. So for me, sacking him in March, it should have been probably about a month earlier when Benitez was available. It's easy to say it in hindsight, but if we'd done that, would have stayed up easily. The best goal of the season is Andres Townsend's free kick against Crystal Palace. And what a difference it made. Since that ball went in, the crowd went mental. They were fought back into the relegation battle. and made the players believe that we can get out of it. But unfortunately, at the end of the season... It didn't. It's the worst goal conceded against Newcastle. We've got two options for you. We've got Stephen Teal as the one against Southampton when he's doing this, doesn't know where he is. Or we've got Okazaki's bundle. So for me, I'm going to go for Okazaki because it was a fucking piss take. Lascelles just 
dancing around. Mares and Vardy go past them. Vardy shoots at Elliot. Elliot palms it in the air. Okazaki goes to try and header it last end and Mbemba tries to header it. They both miss it. They're both scrambling. And then Okazaki, who's five foot six, bundles it over the line. A fucking piss take of a goal and we've got beat 3-0. This decision for Newcastle United this summer is to keep the key players and get rid of the people that don't want to play for Newcastle United. Likes of Winandrum, Colaccini. If they don't want to be here, let them go. Worst decision Newcastle can make this summer is keeping all the unwanted players who don't want to be there and also signing more and more foreigners. I think Newcastle now need a core of British players through the spine, all the way from the goalkeeper, all the way through the centre-back midfield and striker for me. Thanks for watching this video on Newcastle Fans TV. Don't be afraid to put your comments down below and subscribe.